Hello, everybody. Headed to Elkhart this morning, uh, April the 30th, I think, last weekend of April. We're headed to uh, pick up one of the biggest campers we've hauled, the fifth wheel. It's a Brookshire. I think it's like almost 13,000 pounds. Let me look at my book real quick. Uh, yep, 12,789 pounds, and it's 42.2 feet long. So, uh, CDL load this time for sure. Uh, I am going to be taking this one to Claiborne, Texas. It's a fun town there. Uh, of course, today's Saturday morning. Um, probably four hours away from Elkhart and um, we'll go into of course my routine for Texas is I'll pull the camper back to Hanson Kentucky which is not very far from where I live and stop at Love's there I'll park overnight and um, my wife will come pick me up and I'll stay at my house tonight leave out early tomorrow morning, Sunday morning, and head to Texas. I like doing that. I'm only away from home one night, basically Sunday night. I can be uh, with the, there's some Texas runs that would be, that are farther away that would be a stretch to make it all the way back Monday night, but this one right around, if it's under 1,100 miles total from Elkhart, I can make it, uh, I know when I get to Hanson, I can make it from there to Texas in one day. So I can drop it off Monday morning and make it back. I get back, well, get back late Monday evening, but I can make it in one day. So it's pretty cool to be able to do this and only be gone one night. That's why I like these Southern loads. Uh, when they come I mean, basically straight south from Elkhart, well, not straight south, but you know what I'm talking about, where I can stop at my house, have one night there, uh, be able to spend the night there instead of on the road. Well, that's not to say I won't do any more east or west, um, <clears throat> but we have a ton of loads going south right now. I mean, just a ton. If you're not in RV hauling, this is the best time to get in right now. I mean, it's incredible. Uh, I'll leave my email address in the uh, description. You can contact me if you want some more info. But
wanted to share something with you. Uh, I kept having my floorboard in the back kept getting wet and I could not figure out what was wrong with it. I thought it was uh, from driven through some rain the last couple of trips and I thought it might be coming up water flowing up as I'm driving through the rain coming up through some some of the bolt holes that I removed when I took the seats out back there but I put all the bolts back in so it really didn't make sense but I pulled everything out in the back the bed and everything underneath the bed and the carpet I thought I'd found the spot uh, where it was leaking and I got that fixed and put everything back in, the carpeting, and the, under everything underneath the bed and the bed. <laughs> and it rained the night after I did that and the next morning I checked and it was wet again. So I knew it had to be coming in from the roof or sides of the cab or something so my um, son-in-law we was having lunch with him my daughter he works for uh, John Deere he's a mechanic he said one of the ways I find leaks is I just get a water hose and point it on top of the cab and let it roar until I see where it's leaking <laughs> so I I thought I'd do that. I pulled everything back out again. All the bed, everything underneath the bed, the carpeting, it all takes a long time. In 10 miles, keep left to merge but, onto US uh, 31 North toward South Bend. The, uh, so I got it all out and I run the water hose, my water hose out. I got a shower nozzle on there and it, I put it on the roof. and. And then water was pouring in on the side, back, the driver's side, on the back of the cab. And come to find out, the light assembly on the back top of this cab here was loose. The water was just coming in, pouring down into the back, flowing back toward the driver's side and coming out of the hose there. And and uh, so I got, I pulled the light assembly off and cleaned everything up and I actually put some caulking up there and then uh, tightened that light back down and tried it again and didn't have any problems. So I guess that's a tip. If you got a leak, get everything out of your vehicle and just turn the water hose on it and you'll find your leak. So, the tip of the day. Well, we're on our way to pick up a camper. I will keep you all posted of the, the um, weather here in El, up in Elkhart. It's just a couple hours away. It's supposed to be raining, but it's, well, it's sprinkling a little bit now, but not bad. We're supposed to get thunderstorms this evening and tonight, so I'm hoping to make it home before those storms hit. So we will keep you posted. Talk to you later. At the light, turn right onto East Vistula Street. East Vistula Street. In 4.7 miles, turn left onto County Road 35. check in and then go look for our camper. Okay, I'm in the back back section now and I bet that's 
that looks long more like the size of this thing. 9127, 9130. What do we need? That's a 344 FL. I'm going to come back and check the paperwork. Sometimes these guys write down the wrong numbers on these things. <clears throat> Drive on back to the end here. <clears throat> a couple more big ones. There it is, 9131. Right there. It is a coach. Let's say coach or not. All right, I'm just gonna check all the numbers and everything. Make sure everything is right. by itself so I can inspect it without pulling it out 9131 9131 that might be some paint damage up there I need to look at that them red marks on it at the top. <laughs> this is all good documenting this with a video, but I'm going to take pictures of what I see on this. Supposedly these uh, These have been inspected already by the company. Fun Town usually has a representative come up. But you may not have on this one, I don't think so. Yeah. I'll come back and lock these later and make sure everything's locked up. pull it out and take pictures. There's another it's like paint chips about the same place. Hopefully this has a battery and everything in it. I don't have to use my battery. Maybe maybe so, yep. Alright, let's get back up to this thing.
usually I hook it up before I to the power to make sure the lights work before I hook up so that's what I'm going to do turn on the lights I think the battery's running low on this, so hopefully we make it. Checking all the lights. <clears throat> they work. All those up there work. These work. Those up there work. All right. Hit the flasher so we'll make sure that the blinkers work. See how much battery I got left. 28%. And they're blinking. Okay. Lights work so we can hook this thing up now. I'm gonna pull it out and take photos. I'm gonna go ahead and unhook the lights while I'm back in here. Gotta put the plate on. It's difficult sometimes. Lift it just a hair. Flashers. Okay, on this you just want to make sure that these jaws close around <clears throat> the tongue there and it's shut so I'll put a little lock on this in a little bit. 
I hear thunder. This has to be attached to the frame of the vehicle. I like to put a piece of tape on the plug back here so it don't slide out. starting to sprinkle okay we just got this picked up the security person's already checked us out I've already got the paperwork done I'm about to click drive on my keep trucking app um, ready to go we'll head back to Hanson Kentucky so we will it's raining now it's not bad there was some lightning and thunder and it was never a real hard rain. It's enough rain to aggravate. So uh, we're going to be driving back in the rain at least for a little bit. Starting route to home. Head west on County Road 4. I'm gonna drive till I can find a pull-off spot, probably at, um, at Middlebury small town, if there's a pull-off spot there or somewhere, before I hit the highway, just to check everything, make sure everything is, uh, make sure nothing is wrong. onto US 20. Turn right onto US 20. 
<laughs> okay. All right. Uh, this is where I am getting fuel, and I will. I'm not going to film that. Okay, pulling out fuel station. I checked the camper. Everything looks good. Tires inflated well. Lug nuts good. Lights are on. License plate is on the vehicle. On the camper, I mean. For 23 miles, continue straight. Seems to be connected good, so I'm going to hit the road and I will catch you all later. We got about an hour and a half, well, no, hour and 50 minutes before we get back to Hanson. I've got a tip for you. I had to do it. I don't know if you guys have ever done this or not. Leave your something at the dealership when you dropped off your camper. I've left my battery. I've left my uh, license plates. I've left my blue plate for the fifth wheel. Uh, what else? The brackets that hold the uh, not well the stabilizer bars. I've left. <laughs> So here's what I started doing. Today, the only thing I took off was a license that I, that I put on the camper was a license plate. And I hang that here. Or somewhere. Where it's annoying, where it's in the way. And the fifth wheel loop plate. Those are the only two things that I took out of the truck. So by using these, I know that I will see these green labels when I leave the dealership. If I haven't picked them up, I'll have to go back and get them. I've gone all the way home, left my battery and everything. So this will help me. I've got green stickers for everything that I could take or not stickers whatever these things are uh, but I've got them for anything that I would take out when I take it out I hang this up that way I know <laughs> when I'm done at the dealership these will be right here in my way so I'll see them and know to get my stuff back that's the tip. I have to do this because I am very forgetful. My mind is not, I'm always a couple hours ahead. So all I'm thinking about is dropping that camper off and getting on the road to my wherever. So I hope this helps. All right, y'all have a good one.